gentle Savior. Won't you hear my heart?
favor, Lord. Grant them favor. Grant them grace and favor. Grant them favor. Grant them grace. Grant them favor, Lord. Kamatalaya. Bless them in the city. Grant them favor. Where everybody say it's hard. There will be no city that is too hard for them. There will be no city that they will not be fruitful. There will be no city that they will not be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. Labrasida Maya. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And clap your hands for Jesus. Just clap your hands for Jesus. Wherever you are, just clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands. For Jesus, wherever you are, you may be sitting at Washington. Just clap your hands. For Jesus, you can do better. You're doing it for Jesus. Clap your hands. For Jesus, clap your hands. For Jesus, clap your hands. Just make a joyful noise once more. Just make a joyful noise once more for Jesus. Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Be 
name this morning. Our prayer is the Lord, we will see your holiness. Our prayer is the Lord, we will see your glory. We'll see your beauty in our lives. You are holy, Jehovah. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, Jesus. We honor you this morning. You are holy. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. You are holy, Father. We lift up your name. Lord, we want to tell you that you are holy. We want to tell you that you are beautiful. That you are awesome. You are wonderful. You are splendorous. You are glorious. You are marvelous. You are God. You are kind. You are loving. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, my Lord. Oh, you are holy. You are perfect. You are righteous. You are just. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. I pray this morning, oh God, for everybody, even those that are online, to see your beauty, to see your glory, to see your holiness. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Is there somebody that had a birthday online? I'm just going to sing for you and go straight to the word of God. Is there somebody who just the media team will advise? Well, we want to appreciate all of you for joining online, but a special appreciation to the band, the worship team, the media team, and everybody that is here to make sure that you still have the full service experience. Amen. May God richly bless each one of you. Well, we are still in level four. It is adjusted level four. So church is still online. We do not have physical services and we we, we are going to continue online until the president address us, which should be next week, Sunday. But we're still online. So it means next week, Sunday, we are online because usually the address is in the evening. So we're still online. And then we're going to move back to our church. We're still busy with construction. We're going to move back to our church in on the 8th of August. On the 8th of August, we're going to move back that side. Today and then the last service here, obviously, if it's still online, it will be on the 1st of August. And then we're going to move back to our church. And we want to believe that God will continue to bless us. I want to thank each one of you for your continuous uh, generous offering. Continue to pay your tithe. Continue to give. And we trust that God will provide until we finish uh, that building. Amen. We are doing that so that we can contain the sound within the building and also improve in terms of the security measures on the building, but also have a functional church. So part of it is to have two classrooms for, for children's church so that we can group the children in terms of age. Uh, so, so when we move back that side, that should have already been completed. So we want to trust God that we should be done by the 8th of August. Amen. Let me pray and then I'm going to go to the to the word of God. Um, and just help me with my mic uh, so that I don't shout. I don't feel like shouting. Luke chapter 10 verse 38 to verse 42. Luke 10 verse 38 to verse 42. Luke 10, verse 38 to verse 32, 38, 38 to 42. Luke, 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 yes, thank you. Luke, Luke chapter 10. Uh, they say I move very fast, so I'm going to start slow, and then I'll move very fast to the end, because I have a lot of scriptures to share with you. How it happened as they went that he entered a certain village. So we know that he entered the village. What he's going to say now, he's not saying it in the city. 
He's saying it in the village. And he says, and a certain woman. So now we know that uh, he encounters a woman named Martha. Well, we know the name of the, of the woman. And this woman had a house. He says, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Verse 39. Let's go to verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary, and who also sat at the feet at Jesus' feet and had his word. So Martha had a house in the village, and Martha was the host of Jesus. But it happened that in the house of Martha, there was also the sister of Martha. That was Mary. All we are saying now, these are all in the scripture. And, 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 and this sister, her name was Martha. It's not a house. Uh, nothing is said about a house. I don't know if she had one, but she was with her sister. But she sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word. Verse 14. Let's go to verse 14. But Martha was distracted with much saving. Martha was distracted with much saving. And she approached him. So now we know that there's two ladies and one man there is Jesus. So when he says approached him, the him there is not an angel, but the him there is Jesus. So she approached Jesus and said, Lord, oh, do you not care? That my sister has left me to serve alone. Therefore, tell her to help me. Oh, Lord, do you not care that my sister, my blood sister, has left me alone? And therefore, let me serve alone. Help me. Next verse. Next verse. And Jesus answered her. Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled by many things. If it is not the bond for the house that is troubling you, it is the cooking. If it is not the cooking, it is the fact that no one is helping you. He says, Martha, Martha, you are worried about many things and troubled about many things. He's not downplaying the things she's worried about. And the many things that troubles her. My question to you this morning. What are you worried about? And what troubles you? Are you also on the club of many things? What are you troubled about? Corona. What if I get it and I don't survive? What are you worried about? The job. What are you worried about? I mean that he says you are worried and troubled about many things. And I found myself right there in the Bible. I wonder if he has a solution for my worry and for my troubles. Because I hope that whatever I'm worried about. And whatever I'm troubled about will be important to him. That he will give me a solution. Next verse. Next verse. Kamatalaya. Next verse. Verse 40. Two. That's where we are going. That is the next verse, 42. Just put it on, 42. Verse 42. I'm still on verse 41. Verse 42. Just put verse 42. Luke 10, 42. Thank you. But one thing. Ah, Jesus. After being worried about many things, you only have one thing that you are recommending. One thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part. And which will not be taken away from her. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray today. I pray for the reading of your word. I pray that you will bless us. And speak to us in the next few minutes. Speak to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. So today, we are going to talk about... One thing is needed. Please choose that good part. One thing is needed. Please choose that 
good part. That's what God has sent me here today to talk to you about. One thing is needed. Please choose that good part. Now, the scripture we have read speaks about a certain family. And it suggests that Jesus was getting into the village. But when he entered the village, there was a lady called Martha that wanted to host him. And when she hosted Jesus in her house, like all good hosts, she spent more time cooking and, and spent more time taking care of the spiritual need, uh, rather of the physical need of Jesus. She spent more time cooking and hosting Jesus. And Jesus never says anything because Jesus is busy teaching Mary who was sitting in her in his foot, feet. So Mary sits and listens to the teachings of Jesus. But Martha looks at what Jesus needs. And she says, Jesus, I'm busy in the kitchen cooking for you. I'm busy serving you, Jesus. Well, Martha was running and occupied herself with serving Jesus, which is good. There's nothing wrong with it. But when Jesus, when Mary was sitting and at the feet of Jesus, beholding the beauty of Jesus, beholding the glory of Jesus, and listening to every word that Jesus had to say to her. She saw Jesus, the word, becoming a reality, becoming a flesh. Martha saw Jesus having physical needs that needed to be catered for. And I see it every day that we feel that we can be busy with a lot of things. But neglect one thing which is most important. One of the things that the lockdown has taught us is to realize that there were a lot of things that we're doing, but they were not necessarily needed. Or is to make us realize that there are certain things that occupy our time and we can do without. But I'm not on that. I'm on what Jesus is on here. So she become angry. And when she's angry, she blames two people. One, she blames God, which is Jesus, and she blames her sister. Why do you say that? Because she says, Lord, don't you care? So she thinks that because she's too busy with cooking and doing what she thinks is important to her, Jesus does not care because if he cared, he would have chased Mary and say, Mary, get out of here and go and be busy as well with all this other things so she begins to blame Jesus she says Jesus you don't care because if you cared the food I'm cooking is for you oh God she saw that she could feed the needs of God but God says even if I was hungry you will not feed me because you are not qualified to feed me but I am qualified to feed you and to feed your spirit and you know we are too busy oh oh, oh God oh, I might just as well say it we are too busy with a lot of things which are important. I'm not undermining them. We are busy with work. I mean, I, I'm up at four. I'm, at, I'm, I'm leaving the house at five. We are busy with work. We, we, we spend nine hours a day. for, and, and you can multiply all you want. And you will realize that we are actually busy. We are busy with work. We are busy with business. We are busy studying. We are busy eating. We are busy visiting. We are busy with everything. But the one thing. That Jesus says it's important, which is the word of God. We are never busy with it. We are not different from Martha. Because Martha spent all the time on everything else except to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear the word.
The other sister saw Jesus with a natural eye that he needed a ministry. And the other saw Jesus as the word of God. She saw the creator of heaven being with her. How do you spend your time? How much time do you have for the word? Don't worry, today I'm not talking about prayer. I'm talking about the word. How much time do you spend reading the Bible? Yes. Yeah, I, it's not me. You can say the full disease is boring. Well, it's Jesus. Jesus says, one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that part. You need the word of God. In your busyness of life, don't be too busy to take a moment and get a word. Today God has sent me to talk to you. One thing is needed and choose that good part. The word of God. Spend time in the word of God. Invest in the word. As much as you are investing time on your businesses now, the pastor is not against business. Don't get me wrong. I actually pray for your business that it's prosperous. But as much as you have too much time for business and too much time for mathematics, too much time for strategy, and too much time for any other reading you can think of, or, or reading constitutional court judgment, and reading opinions, and, and, and status, and the latest news, and, and how many malls are burnt, when you are done knowing the number of men's malls, and the number of, of shops looted, and so on, please go and find out how many laws did Jesus multiply and how many fishes did he multiply as much as you are good about the fact of the coronavirus and all the other variant the delta variant and so on please go and find out as well the facts that are in the Bible the devil has no problem with you spending time on things but not the word not the word and God began to say to me, Son, today I pray for you. Hamita of Sekhetemeya. I pray that God will make you realize what Jesus is teaching us here. The necessity of the word of God. The necessity of the word of God. My prayer for you, my prayer for us as a church is that we will grow to understand the vitality of the word of God in the life of a believer. My prayer for you is that you will understand the vitality of the word of the living God in the life of the believer. Yes, it's important to cook. It is important to do all these other things you are busy with, Martha. But if I was to choose one thing for you, I will choose that you rather not cook and sit and listen to the word of the living God. If I was to choose anything for you, you rather not have a TV to watch the news and sit and listen to the word of the living God. If I was to choose anything for you, I would rather choose that if you read any book, let the Bible be one of your favorite books. Because the word of God is the word of life. It directs. It carries the impact. So quickly. Reasons why the word of God is one thing that is needed. Reasons why the word of God is it's one thing that is needed. Reasons why the word of God is one thing that is needed. Reasons why. I'll give you five. I'll give you five reasons. There are many others. I know the other time I spoke about other reasons. So I won't repeat them. But I'm giving you five as God wants me to give you today. Reasons why the word of God is one thing that is needed. And you need to be intentional to choosing it. Number one. The word of God 
is the nutrition for the spirit of man. The word of God is the nutrition for the spirit of man. The word of God is nutrition for the spirit of man. Just as the physical man requires food to function and survive, your spiritual man requires the word of God to function and survive. Yes. You see, food is a basic necessity that every human being needs to be able to survive and to be able to function. I'm here to tell you today that every Christian needs a word of God to be able to function and survive. To be able to function and survive. You cannot function beyond the word in your spirit. You cannot survive beyond the word in your spirit. No word, no survival. Little word, little survival. A small, the devil attack you with one challenge. They fire you at work. You have left God. Now I cannot sit and blame you, but I can tell you that you have no understanding of the word. So number one is that the word of God, it is, it's nutrition for the spirit of of a man when you are born again you need to be nourished you need nourishment and God has provided nourishment for every stage of your Christian life first Peter 2 verse 2 as newborn babies desire the pure milk pure milk of the world that you may grow thereby. So we have the blessing of having children. And one of the things that you learn is that children they don't start with solid. They start with milk. When you are born again God has an understanding that there's milk you need so that you will grow. And that milk is the word of God. Do you imagine? <laughs> Do you imagine Nico? He doesn't eat any solids. Saying, ah, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. I don't want milk for the whole week. I'll see milk on Sunday. He just decides when the mother wants to give him milk, he cries. He says, no, milk is on Sunday. Today, I'm, I'm okay. I'm covered. I'm sorted. What will become of him? And yet, there are many Christians like that. Oh, I don't need the milk. It's not me. It's the Bible. As newborn babies desire the pure milk of the world that you may grow. When last did you have milk if you just got saved? Oh, you only have milk on Sundays. So you're going to have milk next week Sunday. And no wonder we don't grow. That you have people that have been in church for 10 years. They are still babies. They haven't grown. In fact, they are the ones that chase people out of the church. They stop people from praying and from serving. Say, you know we have been here. You will get tired. Yeah. Do you see this playing drums of yours? You will get tired. Eh? We were here. We were here. You must take it easy. Relax. Relax. Because they have no understanding of saving God. The only thing they have is, is the membership of seven years. But someone that got saved last year, they are far much better than So the problem is that we deal with people on the natural. We see Mr. Mangman and God sees baby, baby Mangman. Yes. We see, we see, we see you and, and we must respect you because you are married and you have children and you look old. But when God looks at you and look at that student, God sees a student more mature than you. 
because that student has more word than you. You're just a baby. Yes. Who doesn't want to grow? Who doesn't want the milk? And then when you have you, 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 you grow and, and become healthy with milk. Jesus says, Matthew 4 verse, verse 4. He says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So when you get from eating, uh, uh, drinking milk, now you become like older people, like Nkateko, she doesn't drink milk, she's, a, she's an older person. So now you need to eat some bread. The word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, out of the mouth of God, every word every word every word that proceed out of the mouth of God which word do you live by which word do you live by where now which word do you live by which word the one that proceed from the president the one that proceed from your boss the one that proceed from the economy the one that proceed from the doctor the one that proceed from everyone else except the mouth of God wonder you. He says you cannot live. So for us to live as a church, we need the word of God. And then he says that as you grow, Hebrews 5 verse 12, for though this by your, for though by this time you ought to have been teachers, you need someone to teach you again. Ah. The first principles of the oracles of God. You have come to need milk and not solid food. Again. Oh, verse 13. Put verse 13 and 14. For everyone who partakes only in milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a baby. Ah, next one. But solid food belongs to those who are of age. That is those who by reason of use of their senses have exercised the sand of both good and evil. He says you were graduating from milk but you seem now you went back to milk again. He says by now you should have been a teacher. By now you should have been able to win someone for Jesus. You should have been able to teach someone what it means to be young, what it means to serve God, what it means to do the work of the Lord. But you seem to have went back to being a baby again because you have not put the word of God into practice by the reason of use. Many Christians, they know this in theory, but they have never used it. You know, church, when you take a step and you are intentional to say, I'm going to use the word of God. I'm going to apply the word of God. The Bible says that's when you grow up. You grow by doing. You grow by acting on the word of God. By reason of use. And I want to challenge you today. Come on, I want to challenge you today. If the Bible says by his stripes you are healed, you know what you should be doing? You should be getting out there and take on the sickness and say by the reason of use, I want to apply this word. I want to apply this word. I am healed by his stripes. Don't sit on the word. I grew in the Lord because I applied the word. What if it doesn't work? You apply it more. What if it doesn't work? You apply it more. You apply it some more because you can only grow by the reason of use. When last did you Let's take away the pay slip and all these other things of the world, the medical aid, 
and all these other things. When last did you say, I'm standing on the word, I'm going to do it because God has said I must do it. Yes. And if you don't get it right, don't worry. It's like a child. When a child wants to walk, they start by crawling and then they do one step and then they fall. And then they do one step and then they fall. They do one step, they fall. They do two steps, they fall. They do three steps, they fall. They do four steps, they fall. But before you know it, by reason of use, they can walk, they can run. And I see the Lord saying, he wants to see you running on the word of the living God. He wants you to run and walk in divine health, walk in divine healing. But it's going to take you to take on a flu and you fall. You take on a headache and you fall. But before you know it, by a reason of use, you're going to see the results. Why don't you stand on the way
Sakamatalaya. We are going to walk in the miracles. We are going to see the word being performed in our lives. Oh, Kamatalaya, you said in your word, you were going with the apostle and the Lord working with them and confirming the word in their lives through signs, miracles, and wonders. I pray for each one. May they begin to walk in signs. May they begin to walk in miracles. May they begin to walk in wonders as they begin to put your word in use. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Listen to me. I'm done. That's a level that God wants you, <laughs> wants you to go into. But you're not going to go to that level by your MBA and all these other things. You're going to need the word. And as you step on the word, you're going to access the new level. But you're going to learn to put the word in practice, Abraham. When I say to you, Abraham, take your only son, go and offer him on the altar. And the son asks you, Papa, I see the altar. I see everything. But I don't see the lamb for an offering. Don't say no. Just say the Lord will provide for himself a lamb for a sacrifice I see this church moving to a new level moving to a new glory moving to the miraculous when the disciples and everybody said send them away send them away we don't have food he began to say bring it on bring it on and as they do what he told them the Bible says and the bread multiplied in their hands and he fed 5,000 you are moving to a level of abundance. You are moving to an overflow. Oh, come on, the lawyer. You will see it before your eyes. It's going to multiply. If only you will be bold enough to make a move based on the word of God. Father, I seal this prophecy by the word of the living God. I pray for them.
is a realm where nothing is impossible a realm where nothing is too hard a realm of a miraculous not by mighty not by power not by anything lord but by the anointing by the spirit of the living god whatever they could not do they can do now whatever was not possible it's possible now <laughs> Whatever they could not do, it's possible now. Whatever they couldn't do, they can do now. Whatever mountain that was too hard for them, it's becoming plain by the reason of an anointing. Whatever it was impossible, not what education can do but what your power and your anointing can do in the life of your people forgive us for being too busy being too busy for you Lord I pray for each one of us may we walk in the miraculous may we see you we have read about you, but you know, God, we have not seen you. And we are waiting in Jerusalem today. And the power of the Almighty has come upon us. And these signs will follow us. Whatever long standing issue, I pray for them today. Anoint them. You are anointed for the supernatural. You are anointed for the impossible. You are anointed to see mountain tremble before the presence of the living God. I break every stronghold. Every impossible situation. Every devil. Every frustration. I break it by the anointing. Every long-standing issue, I stand here as a man of the living God, called by God. I break it. I break it. Siwa ponile hamadla ko abuzicho. Let's have the worship team.
to the realm of impossibilities. Welcome to the supernatural. Congratulations. Clap hands for Jesus. Congratulations to the realm of the power, the realm of the supernatural. Congratulations. You come on. Congratulations, 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 congratulations that you have seen the power of the living God. You have seen God do the impossible in your life. You will see it. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Congratulations. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, in the land of the living. Father, you are holy. Worthy of honor and worthy of all glory. No man can do this thing unless the Lord is with them. That will be their story. That will be their testimony. That will be their testimony that no human being can do this thing unless the Lord is with them. Every womb that is closed, I open it in the name of Jesus. Every door that is closed, I open it in the name of Jesus. Every mountain, I declare you a plain in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every stronghold, I break you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever it is impossible, I declare you possible by the reason of the anointing in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining. We apologize for going over time. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Walk in the supernatural. Walk in the miraculous. God bless. We love you.